Hey, good afternoon. It's Jim from JagFX.com. It is Saturday, the 12th of September, 2020. This video is my weekly analysis video where I go over all of the daily charts, have a look at all the pairs I'm trading using the high probability divergence method. So that's from my two books. You can see in front of you, the two on the right. So let's have a look. Uh, first up, I hope everyone's enjoying their weekend so far. We're out of our lockdown or partial in, partially anyway. So the beach is open and the bars are open. So two good things. Once the gym opens, that'll be even better. All right, let's have a look here. This Word document in front of you is just a brief description of what all the different colored lines on my charts mean. If you haven't seen this method before, you might want to just pause the video, read this, or take a screenshot. Um, like I always say in my videos, if you if I talk too quick or you can't understand me, English is not your first language, etc. Just you can pause the video anytime, read my notes. If you do have any questions, you can always contact me through either the Facebook group, Telegram channel, email. There's plenty of ways to get in touch with me. Happy to answer questions for anyone. All right, so let's have a look. So that's just my notes on the chart. So let's find the charts. They're here somewhere. This is trading view. This is the daily charts. This is my watch list on the right. This is all the pairs I'm trading at the moment. If they're highlighted in blue, means it's open trades. No highlight, no trade. And the pinky ready color means just something that's caught my eye or I'm keeping an eye on it for some particular reason. So we'll start at the top of the list. They are in alphabetical order. As you can see, we'll look at the Aussie Swiss. Now, you'll see my notes in here. You'll see S1, S2, S3. That's sequence three, sequence two, sequence one. So that's where the sequences actually commence. Previously, I was doing a lot of hedging on the daily charts, hence these old sequences that start a long time ago. I am still doing some hedging, but not nowhere near as much. So I'm being a lot more selective and generally just taking hedging trades on what I consider very good setups, like normally it involves hidden, um, hidden divergence or double tops or something like that. Uh, but generally most of my trades now on the daily charts will be the more traditional type of trading where I take my entry and place a stop loss. My stop losses are marked by these red dotted lines. So anytime you see a red dotted line, that's a stop loss. So just quickly here, if you hadn't read that Word document, cells are designated by the red line, so the red vertical um, dash line and the red solid horizontal line. Buys are blue. So you can read my notes, sell, hedge buy, second sell, second hedge sell, etc. You have break even levels, you have an overall break even level the size of the level, uh, the size of the overall position, etc. Break even levels are marked by these yellow dash lines, horizontal dash lines. If you see red trend lines, basically means um, some sort of bearish divergence already confirmed or in the process of setting up green bullish divergence. Blue trend lines, just something that interests me, normally support resistance or a trend line that is um, interests me. So that's about it. So in this S1 is, you can see it all here, it's got a break even down here, We're trying to come down off these previous highs. A lot of the Aussie pairs are struggling at the moment, going sideways, they're, they're struggling to break the previous highs. This is the same on this pair. So S1 is uh, that sequence there. S2 is this buy here, and it's got a stop in place. Uh, already closed half, you can read my notes, stop moved up. You can see that notes here where the stop's moved up above the entry level. So that's can't lose on sequence two. Sequence three was this last cell here with a stop and place there. And we're at the just about just above the entry level. In the meantime, the MACD platinum, which is this indicator, zero lag MACD is still above the zero level. So no action will be taken on sequence three until this comes down through the zero level. Remember, this is an indicator like an oscillator. It's like a MACD, as I said, it's a zero lag MACD. If it's above the zero level, which is this gray dotted line, I'm looking to sell. If it's below, I'm looking to buy. That's that's it in a nutshell. So let's move right along. We'll go to Oz Yen. Uh, we're in a buy. S1's a buy from back here. And it's got a stop in place. You can see the stop just above the entry level there, so that's good. Uh, I've already closed half, made a few dollars. All these trades are recorded on a shared spreadsheet on Google Drive. Everyone has access to those spreadsheets. I do the 
daily and the 12 hour charts. There's a link to those spreadsheets in the description of the video. So you're more than welcome to check out that. I've been trading the dailies for a fair while now, over a year. I think we're getting up close to possibly close to a thousand trades. I don't know, a thousand maybe. Uh, the profit to date is actually how much profit I've made on each pair since I've started trading on those spreadsheets. So my base lot is 0 0.02, which has been consistent for all my trades. So it's about 20 cents a pip. So you can do the mass. What's that? 330 divided by 20 cents. What's that? 330 divided by 0.2 equals. So that's about 1,650 pips to date on that pair. So that's just all that means. Just, just gives me an idea if it's a pair I'm worth pursuing. There's a couple of pairs I'll probably drop off this list, but at the moment, that's all right. So we're in a buy here, in a sell, which is coming, going nowhere. Like I said, Aussie pairs are going sideways. This yellow dashed line here, overall break even, you see it here, it's negative, net 0 0.01 between the two trades. So as long as price remains below that yellow line, I'm in profit in both trades. So it's all good there. Aussie New Zealand, uh, only the one trade, a buy trade, took it on uh, yesterday, Friday. Hasn't really gone anywhere, or was it Thursday? That's Friday's candle, Thursday, uh, Friday morning I took it, yep. Uh, you can see that the notes, hidden bullish divergence, you can see that there. There's this big, I'll just, uh, got this beautiful, see the resistance, resistance, down, down, back up, resistance, resistance, back up, broke through it, came down, now it turns into support. Uh, it seems to be looking all right, plus price has come back to the 50 MA buy signal there. I have got a stop in place, but if this turned against me, this is one I'd probably hedge. I'd probably remove the stop, and if I've got a sell signal, I'd probably take the sell hedge. I like this setup. Uh, ideally, I want to see it break this previous high here. Whether it does that or not, who knows? If it doesn't, then it shows the trend may be reversing. But in the meantime, the MACD Platinum's below the zero level, so I'm happy to try and hedge this if it comes to that. Now this green, if you see a green dashed line, normally means something of significance. In this case, it's parity, 1.000, big number. You can see how price just touched it and bounced straight up. Aussie USD in an old sequence, sequence one back here, sequence two, I think, sweet. Uh, yep, it's a buy and it's got a stop in place somewhere. Where is the stop? Stop keeps on moving up. So the entry was at 69, 77, 9 stops up to 71.256. So I can't lose on sequence one, so that's all good. Sequence three, there is no sequence three, so don't worry about that. I was in a sell, I think it was, I already closed a bit out and I got stopped out on the remainder, so it was all good. Uh, so my break even levels for overall and sequence one are these two yellow lines here. So I really haven't got far to go down. This big green line is the 70 cent level, so it's just a big number. So that's the Aussie, looking okay there. CAD Swiss, now this is one I did stuff up. Now, if you've been watching any of my videos, you'll get sick of me showing you these five buy trades we've got over here are still open. I dropped the ball, I made a mistake, and now I've got stuck with these five trades. The good thing is, even though they're losing trades, and uh, you know they're probably losing me $1,000 or close to it each, uh, they're positive in the overnight interest rate, overnight swap, so it's not the end of the world. I can leave them dangling. I've got plenty of margin in my account. It's not a drama, but I shouldn't have those trades open. So that's sequence one, which is these old trades here. So I'm now concentrating on the right-hand side of the chart, but not having much luck either. So we've got sequence two, which started all the way back here, and you can read all my notes. It's a slow-moving pair, and it's just not really producing the results I want. So it's probably a pair I will remove from my watch list once I clear all these trades. Um, it's slow going, so we're in a sequence from here and I've, I've tr manipulated that a bit take I started with a sell and I'm, it's just at the moment it's hedged sequence two so I can't lose on that I'm just locking in losses sequence three is this recent sell here it's got a stop and place up there you can see my notes there's nice um, hidden bearish divergence there I'm trying to push this down lower so what I'll do is I'll try and work this sequence three trade uh, try and make some money out of that so I can add it to this profit then I'll look for a buy trade. Yeah, the MACD Platinum will hopefully go through the zero level and come in back into buy territory. Then I'll look for a buy trade where I can either take a new 
by trade as a sequence four or possibly if sequence three is closed out a new sequence three or then I'll take a buy trade that adds to sequence two and may look at closing out one of these sell trades on it too. So there's, there's options when you get a lot of trades. You can get a little bit creative with your trade management as you've seen me do. But yeah, these old buy trades are a bit of a, an anchor <laughs> that will work out eventually. Right, CAD yen, no trades on. Uh, I think there wasn't a sell up here. Yeah, it just didn't go very well at all. It's not a fast moving pair, I've made too much profit on it. But it's a pretty easy pair to trade when it's when it's on. Yeah, I don't know, I might I might ditch it. It's not not getting me excited. Euro Aussie, this is a pair that alright. The first thing, sequence one's this sell here. I've been in this a long time. The stop and place is there, so I can't lose on that. That's good. That's a you know, possibly a one thousand plus pip trade so don't worry about that sequence two is this sequence here which is a lot of trades happening but it's not too bad i've just taken all the horizontal lines off because the chart was getting a bit cluttered with all these trades so there's that's why you don't see any of these horizontal lines on this pair it's forming a sort of a base here and i'm trying to just work my way out of it. the overall break even levels or the break even levels are just up here so not too far away uh sequence three is a sell in here and it's got a stop and play so that's sweet can't lose on that one probably already taken some profit on that by looks uh, yeah close one sequence force is buy it's going nowhere fast uh, big support level hidden um, bullish divergence you can see it made a bit of profit on this so you can see a lot of stops and play so it's all good it's it it looks like a lot's happening here but it's not a pair that concerns me I don't mind trading the Euro Aussie, I like it. Uh, it's just this COVID stuff, the whole, it makes the charts all look ugly because it puts everything out of sort of, out of whack. So once this disappears off the chart, this chart will look a bit better. But in the meantime, you just gotta put up with this. Or you can, you know, you could sort of, to get, you, know, you can start, there you go. Look, the chart looks a lot easier to trade then once you just get rid of that COVID thing. But in the meantime, we've got to deal with it. It's part of trading. Right, Euro CAD. Uh, what do I mean here? A sell here, sequence one, you can read there. And it's got a stop and place below the entry. Sequence two was this buy. I actually took it here. Now you can see it's not on the, the QMP dot, which is these green and uh, red dots. I did change my QMP filter. Uh, I went to my indicators. And I've got, I think I've got a couple of different versions, in, or I changed the version or something, and it's it's put because I changed the version, I brought up the speed with everyone else. Um, it's put my dots out of whack a little bit, so that's why I took the trade here. But once I changed the version, it was a few days later on this candle, so it's not not much different. I'll show you on another pair where I made a mess of it, but um, so we're in a sell here and in a buy here, and. I don't think I didn't put a stop in place there because there's hidden uh, bullish divergence. So this is one I would trade out of. But in the meantime, it's above my entry level anyway, and the MACD platinum still below the zero level. It's a pair I don't mind trading. The Euro CAD. So we're looking good there. Overall break evens down here, and because we're positive 0.01, as long as price remains above that yellow line, we're sweet on both trades. Euro pound in a buy here. Brexit news has forced this pair up. Remember, this goes opposite to all the other pound pairs because pounds are the second, not the base currency, it's the second currency. So that goes the other way. So I broke this resistance level here, bang. Big number here is a 90 cent level through that. So I lost 26 dollars on this initial buy trade here. Made up for it in this one, so it's all good. Yeah, it's a pair I don't mind. It can be slow going. You look at the COVID news there, but now it's a big push up based on Brexit news. Euro yen, uh, nothing happening here. Uh, it's sort of stuck in a bit of a sideways range, as you can see by the blue trend lines. Big, regular, bearish divergence. So even if I did get a buy signal here, I'd be reluctant to take any buys. To me, this saying, eventually this is, you know, look at price going up, higher highs on price. Look at the oscillator, complete opposite. So if you take buys here, you are risking 
it is a high risk trade. It, look, it probably could just keep on going to the moon. You know, you don't know. But you know, if you're looking at the sh you know, possible people looking at a double, triple top forming here, or maybe even you'd probably even call it a head and shoulders. Possibly it hasn't been formed yet. But yeah, I'd be more inclined to look for trades to the downside here than to the upside. Even though the MACD platinum's below the zero level, I might just sit out completely until it it sort of rebalances itself. I guess is a term you'd use. There's plenty of other pairs to trade if you if in doubt, stay out. Euro New Zealand in a buy here, um, going nowhere fast. MACD platinum's below the zero level. Hidden bullish divergence. No stop in place because we've got that hidden bullish divergence, and as long as the MACD platinum's below the zero level, all good. So we just sit here. You can see it all. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, yeah, it's not a bad pair to trade. Made a few dollars on that, based on the 20 cent per pip. All right, here's the euro. Very similar to euro yen. Um, I was in a sell here. I think I got I took closed out half and got stopped out in the remaining half. Um, but again, price is going up. MACD platinum's going down. Regular bearish divergence there. Uh, you know, and if a buy signal presented here, I wouldn't take it either. Even though, again, MACD Platinum's below the zero level. I'm in a buy, so from back here, which is good, I'll stop and place here. So I've got a, a really pretty tight stop, locking in profit there. So it's all good. If there was a new buy signal, I would take it based on the bet, the divergence, and I've already got one on, so. Pound Aussie. Now, this is one I messed up. And you can see my notes. I changed the versions of the QMP filter and missed the hedge trade. <laughs> so, all right. So I took a buy trade here, and it was based on a green QMP filter dot at the time with an older version of the indicator. And it was based on hidden bullish divergence by these green trend lines. Then prices dropped away, and I'm thinking, why is not why am I getting why aren't I getting a sell signal here? <laughs> Then I realised my buy sig my last signal, because I changed the versions of the QMP filter, was a sell signal, which is back here, which was a trade I could probably still be in. So I just took a sell trade to hedge this buy trade that I took. So in the, at the moment, I'm locking in a loss between this red line and the blue line. So I'm locking in a loss there. This thing's falling down. The MACD platinum's below the zero level. So I'm limiting my losses now, even with all the bad Brexit news. Um, now... What I'm doing now is just waiting for an opportunity for a new buy signal, which will come eventually. It doesn't matter how far it drops, it will come eventually. And when I get that buy signal, yeah, I, I've got options. I can just take a bigger buy and try and get the break in and close out of these trades, or I could get a bit high risk, high riskier, uh, close out the sell, take a bigger buy, so I just have two buys on, leave myself a bit exposed there, but yeah, there's options, as I said. But yeah, I've stuffed up here because I changed versions of the filter. Not the end of the world, though. Pound CAD, this is one I'm hedged. Uh, I took a buy in here based on hidden bullish divergence. I did have a stop in place originally, and I removed it as I took the sell hedge. Again, you can see those... Um, the QMP filter dots are no longer there because again it was because I changed the version of that filter. So if I'd just gone to plan um, based on the this this version of the QMP filter, I would have still taken that same buy and I would have been just in the one hedge sell, possibly if I didn't get out of that buy. Instead I'm in a, a buy sell, second buy, second hedge sell. So basically four trades, and as you can see the MACD platinum stayed below the zero level still drawing in my trend lines eventually this thing will turn up and then i'll do the same as i talked about on the pound aussie but in the meantime i'm stuck in four trades probably should only be two trades based on the qmp filters but you know you make mistakes in trading you learn from them you move on i make mistakes you can see all my trading i show the same trades every day and it's just you know and i you will you will make mistakes i've been doing forex since 2002 so I'm a slow learner. Anyway, pound Swiss. Um, sell trade up here. I'd already had one, two, three goes at this, as you can see by the losses up here. Fourth one, nailed it. Thank you, Brexit. Uh, I broke this support level now, so we're down through that. You can see my levels here. And now I keep on, I draw these green trend lines in. Now this one's 
I adjust these every day until they're either confirmed or they're no longer valid. If they're no longer valid, I just delete them, all right? So at the, at the moment, this is a lower low just. You can see minus one there from this low. And in the meantime, this is just above. It, it will be lower come Monday, but at the moment, it's there. So if this comes down, then both those green lines get removed because they're no longer valid. So at the, mean, at, at the meantime, they're just valid. So just gives me an indication, preparation. So it's the pound Swiss looking good, close that half, stop and place. MACD platen through the zero level. When I move the stop, I will wait for a new either um, green dot on the MACD platinum, which may coincide with a green dot on the QMP filter, but generally the MACD platinum will be first. And then it's just then I can look drop down a four hour chart and just look to bring my stop down or something like that. Pound yen, similar story in a cell here. This is my third go at it. First one was this grey line, second one was this grey line, and here's the third one. So you can see my losses there. And now we're down nicely, close that half, stop it, break in. Again, green trend lines drawn in. Pound New Zealand, one of my problem pairs. Now I'm in lots of trades. One, two, three sequences. Probably stuffed up here and probably should have been in the fourth one. Not sure what happened there, but don't worry. So here's my sequences. Got break even levels, three break even levels. The solid yellow line is an overall break even level. Uh, you can see prices through it. You're saying, well, why don't you just close everything, Jim? Because there's a lot of trades there. Because there's a big swap on a lot of these trades. And I've got a lot of swap to make up. So even if I, even though technically it's through the actual break-even level, it's not. I'd still be down about thousand dollars or so. As you can see, my notes. I sort of keep notes, keep track of things. Uh, so this purple dotted line, you can just see it on the video. I've made a note that has sequence three, which is this break top break-even level here, has it at um, plus a hundred and profit, hundred dollars profit. So I just keep track. I'll just wait here. The good thing is I'm down through these levels now and I can, if there is a reversal, then I can start look at closing some of these sell trades and adding to my overall profit. As you can see, my profit to date is $2,561 in cents. Uh, so if I close out everything and I was took a loss overall at 1,100, I just deduct it from that overall profit and it's still a very good profit on this pair. But I want to. I want to try and try and just work my way out of it genuinely and milk as much as I can out of the whole sequence. So it's an old sequence from a long time ago, from the start of the year, 31st of Jan. But you know we're in a good place there at the moment. So and the reason it's purple is just because I'm keeping an eye on it. This thing dropped down on Monday. Had a quick. I just. I'd be tempted if I can get out at overall break even for all these trades in front of me or you know, a $100 loss or something like that, I would, I would just take that and clear my chart and start afresh. Pound USD in a cell here and going all right. Now you can see this one was, it was similar to Pound New Zealand. The Pound Aussie, I was in a lot of trades and I got in a bit of, a bit of trouble and eventually worked my way out and look at that profit. And that's based because I did go in with some big trades uh, bigger than normal, bigger than my 0 0.02, but I adjusted everything down on my spreadsheet to reflect, to keep it consistent as a 0 0.02. So even at 0 0.02, that's 8,991. And you work out that in pips, so that's a, um, a 20 cents a pip. What is it? 8,991 divided by 0.2. You know, that's nearly, nearly, um, Nearly 45,000 pips, <laughs> which is a bucket load. So it's good profit on the one pair. But, you know, there's a bit of luck there, but that's what happens when you, you take the risks, when you hedge, you can profit handsomely. New Zealand CAD, uh, I'm going to buy here, stop and place. Then I took a sell, and it's got a stop and place, going nowhere fast. This this blue line I think it's just like a resistance slash yeah so res resistance resistance broke it came down bit of support here broke it again back up now struggling to get through it and sort of hanging around there again so it's just uh, uh, proven to be a bit of a sticking point 
as long as price remains below that yellow uh, dash line, overall break even on both trades. Uh, what's our profit to date? 730. So it's a pair I don't mind trading. New Zealand yen in a sell here, going nowhere fast, stop and place. Yeah, look, the MACD plat, I'm, I'm normally looking at the, um, the orangey browny coloured line when it gets close to the zero line, but you can see, if you can just see there's a faded sort of grey blue line there, that sort of gives me an early warning and that's getting close to the zero level. This thing, and you've got this big number here too, the 70 cent level, sort of bounced off that, but I like this sort of, see this blue, we've got resistance up here, resistance, 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 sort of broke through but it didn't, now it's coming back up to it, which is my entry level. So at the end of the day, I might have a look at this and just think, ah, just close it and be done with it and wait for a new setup. It's been good to me, the New Zealand yen, I don't mind trading it. So let's see. New Zealand USD in an old one sequence one here and break even levels here. I like this, um, it's like, like the Aussie pairs, we've got, we've got, you know, pretty significant sort of levels that have trouble breaking through. And again, we're up here and it's it's struggling. Um, so I'm just trying to get down to that yellow line and we'll take it from there. In the meantime, not much happening. There was a sell taken here, but I closed out I closed out half and I think I got stopped out in the remaining half. It's a pair I don't mind trading. So it's just slow going at the moment. USD CAD, uh, this is one pair I will be ditching once I clear this deficit and yeah, so sequence one's a, uh, all of this. <laughs> sequence sequence two is right, because that's a, uh, a sell with a stop in place. So that's that one's sweet. But sequence one's caused me grief. But I haven't got far to go to get up to these overall break-even levels. So what I'd like to see is maybe close out sequence two and make some money on that. Maybe try and clear this deficit or get close to. Then sequence one, just try and push it up through there bring this thing to zero, then I'm done with this pair, I'll tell you. And another pair that I'm gonna ditch in a heartbeat is this one. This one is the USD Swiss franc is causing me all my grief at the moment, both on the daily and the 12 hour chart. So I'm actually making money on the 12 hour charts on it. Uh, and you could probably make an argument say I'm making money on the daily charts because I've got profit here because I'm I'm in this sequence one, sequence two, and sequence three. You can see in the big sequences, they're all going to the same way. I'm basically buying when, look at, the, look at the market, I should be selling. So I've just, in the meantime, I've been a little bit creative, closed a few trades, adding to my overall profit, but until we get back up this way, I'm not gonna make any money on this pair. It's starting to, yeah, look at the divergence bullish regular divergence it's just starting to form so you, you think this thing's going to go up sometime macd platinum's on the wrong side the zero level now and we're starting to we've got um i took a sell here you can see there's a red dot in there based on this bearish hidden bearish divergence so we're in the sell side now <laughs> macd platinum's above the zero level so we just try and keep on adding to this profit to date and in the meantime look for any opportunities to try and clear any of these sequences even if i look at say look at one sequence it might be two thousand dollars down close it and take two two thousand off that total something like that i've got a light and a load on this pair it is causing me grief uh, in the meantime as i'm fighting this pair i'm playing all the other pairs so even though it looks bad and if this was the only pair you're trading you'd be you would be stressed but because i trade 20 odd pairs it's not so bad there's 18 other pairs at least that are and making me money and in the meantime I just keep on working this and you know just trying to come up with better ideas better options on how to um, work these sequences all right moving right along after that uh, USD Japanese yen it's a pair I don't mind trading but um, it's a pair again I've changed my indicator the version the last QMP cell was actually here uh, with the older version that was actually in here. I took my cell here, it's going nowhere, and have a look at it, it's <laughs> sideways. <laughs> have a look at the MACD Platinum, just above the zero level, just going sideways. So we've got a stop and play, it's got a cell entry there, <laughs> going nowhere fast, but 
I don't know what I'm going to do here. I might just if I, if I get to, if I get a buy signal here, which I technically have now, yeah, should just close it, take the loss, and wait for a better setup, and let everything readjust. Now the new version of the QMP filters on. All right, that's about it for the daily charts, guys. Uh, with those notes, I'll bring it up for you again, just in case you want to have a read. Like I said, they're all recorded on the shared spreadsheet. You're more than welcome to look at that. The link to that's in the description of the video. Also, um, everyone's more than welcome to join the private Facebook group where I post all these trades at the time I take them. So it's all very transparent. And I'll also call all the management of the trade. So anytime I close or move a stop or anything like that, it's all recorded on the Facebook group and the Telegram channels. If you do like the videos, please hit the subscribe button. If nothing else, hit the like button. That'd be greatly appreciated. Now, I'll get this uploaded to YouTube, and that'll be me done for the weekend. I'm pretty sure I've done all my, checked all my emails, answered any questions that may have come up. Uh, the EA testing is still going ahead, so we're getting closer. Uh, we just got a few minor issues we've got to deal with, and hopefully that'll get released sooner than later. All right, enjoy the weekend all, don't get too drunk, and I'll chat to you on Monday. Cheers.